Hey guys, this is my review on Elsa and Garvel. Yes, I'm going to keep calling her Elsa because I'm going to get the name wrong and make it something else. So to make it simple, I'll just call her Elsa. So um, as you can see, she has a long list of pros. Uh, so let's get right into it. She has a 25% missile and pierce resist skill on not only on herself, but also on her allies in an AoE 1 square. On her uh, sub job, she also provides a 38% magic skill to her allies and herself as well. So just having it on your team, you can increase your uh, damage type to those three types of attacks by quite a significant chunk. So uh, she is a very good off tank kind of uh, unit. Uh, I'll get into my comments later on why I think she's an off tank instead of a tank. Uh, but she doesn't have high uh, defenses, like she doesn't have a you know any innate defenses itself, uh, like the DEF value, but she gets her defensive abilities from these uh, like resistances. That's how she builds her d defense. In addition to that, she has a heal down skill, a stun. Uh, she has high accuracy both in her mastery and in one of her passives. Um, she has a drain HP skill, so she can keep uh, you know attacking and healing herself with it. She has a, a drain AP skill as well. And uh, on her uh, uh, one of her sub jobs, she has a, a skill to poison uh, poison enemies. Um, and she also has an alternate missile uh, type of damage on her uh, double gunner sub job. So you can build her you know, in any of these three sub jobs according to what you need. You can use her own uh, you know, main job as a sub job to get access to that drain AP skill, or you can make her into a magic tank by giving her access to not only the magic resist skill, but also the magic barrier on herself. Or if you just happen to need two different types of damage, or if you're building a missile team with her in it and use her as a light missile trainer or damager, you can use you can do that as well. Typically, missile units have low attack, which I've covered in different, um, you know, in a different video. But she has a pretty high attack. Uh, she also comes with you know the golden blade, or you know she comes with. She is able to equip the golden blade, which has a high attack. So she has, you know, pretty high attack. So if you give her, uh, you know, missile support, she can deal pretty high missile damage if you build her, you know, in that kind of team. So that's just a different option. So I'm just saying that she she's a very versatile um, unit that can be built in different ways in different classes, uh, according to what you need from her. Now, when we look at her cons, it's a much smaller list. Uh, so to start off, she doesn't really have a good uh, counter ability, in my opinion. Um, she has two counters that you know attack back, uh, but I, you know, I can see her being more as a tank, off tank kind of thing. Not a real tank, but an off tank, a bruiser kind of role. So I would prefer to for her to have a counter ability that would reduce damage taken, and she has one of those, but it only reduces magic damage. Um, at least if she had two different counters, one for magic and one for physical damage, you can uh, choose between wh how you want her to counter and you know switch uh, sw switch the counters that way. But you're stuck with only having a magic counter to reduce damage. Uh, she also only has move three, jump one, which is you know kind of normal, which is the standard. Uh, but um, you know being a melee unit who only has uh, you know main job skills at least that are height one and uh, your max skill range is four uh, in your main job skills I think uh, you know overall the combinations of those three points together makes her not as flexible to move around as you know a lot of other units um, I, I think the standard in a way is in my opinion at least uh, is a range of five a lot of skills have uh, a range of five and so anything below that in my opinion for some reason I always think of it as below average I'm sure that's not actually true but for some reason that's how I think of it probably because I started playing with you know rangers who have like a range of eight right so um, anyway so so that's that's the reason why I why I think that way but I think that's that's one of her biggest uh, disadvantages anyway, uh, just not being able to move around. Uh, she doesn't even have any sub job skills that can increase her you know, movement or her jump. Um, 
So I, I I think that's that's really it for the cons in terms of the unit itself. Um, there are other uh, disadvantages to her, but I'll cover them in different sections. Like I will talk about her as a you know right now just as a unit in itself, and then I'll talk about her in a PvP context and then in like arena context and so on and so on. But as a unit, I think she's a you know very good unit in herself because she has like so much flexibility which i've covered you know a huge list of pros uh and her one you know big con is her lack of movement and range which doesn't she doesn't really need as a you know tankish brute uh bruiser kind of role so i think she's she's going to be very good at what she does um uh, i think her advantages uh far outweigh her cons as a unit now let's get into the PvP considerations. So as I've been saying, she's very flexible. She has like so many skills that you can build in so many ways to support your team however you need. However, I think in auto content, like say uh, Arena uh, or Guild Wars, I think sh it'll be hard to use her. The reason I say that is because, um, well, right off the bat, she has two different skills that can increase resistances. What if you want her to use one skill instead of the other? like you won't be able to choose right especially in say guild war when you put her on defense uh you don't know who you're gonna getting attacked by and it would be great if she can look at the enemies and see oh there's a lot of pierced units i'm gonna use a pierced resist skill instead of the magic skill but she won't do that you can only set her up in one way so uh and, and you know on top of that she also has like a magic barrier skill which i think will be really fantastic for her to use on herself if she's up against a magic team and put like woe of love on her or something but uh, sh she won't do that. I mean, you have to set it up exactly how you want, and she can only do like one thing in auto battle. Like you, like if you know you're gonna be fighting uh, magic users all the time, you can set her up to use only the magic resist skill by turning off the other skills. Or if you want her to be the magic tank of your team and you don't want your ma your team to take any damage at all, you can turn off again all the other skills and put the magic barrier on her and well of love or something or uh, even set it up so that you can turn off all her active abilities except for the 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 taunting skill the, uh, under her subject under her spellblade sub job and she can do that but you know she has like so many great things about her so it's kind of sucks that you have to limit her uh, to use her the way you want in auto battle so i think that's i think that's a uh, a negative to her uh, for me, I think she's a fantastic unit because I'm mostly interested in the live content anyway. But, uh, I mean, there are a lot of users and everybody plays the game for different reasons. So I wanted to say that as a con. Now, some other notes that I wanted to make was that, uh, you know, this is like, should you should you invest in her? Should you buy her? That's like this section here, the other notes part. So, as you know, anniversary is coming. It's less than a month away and we're getting some really good units there. So, uh, you know, and those units are limited, like Yuna is going to be limited, the uh, Esper and Vision card pulling them is going to be limited. So, um, you know, Elsa will be around for a long time. She's a permanent addition to the game. So you could always pick her up later. You can always slow build her. Um, you, you might not need to pick her up right now. Uh, it, it depends on you, right? Um, it depends on your goals, uh, what, when you would like her skills available. The second point there is saying that there are two other units, one of them which is free, which is going to have her, uh, you know, 25% pierce and missile uh, resist skill. So if you wait a couple months, or I don't know when, you know, we're getting it, but, you know, let's say in a couple months, in two months, we're getting it. So maybe you can wait for two months to get that skill that you pick up for free, uh, well, that unit that you pick up for free, which has that skill, um, or maybe you need her right now because you have this really fantastic build that you want to uh, do right now and you need that light mastery that she has to do it. Maybe that's what it is, right? So, um, like, I'm not going to tell you you should buy her. I'm not going to tell you you should not buy her. I'm going to tell you these are things for you to think about and for you to make your own decision. The uh, third point that I have here. This is what I personally feel. I feel like br from the current roster of units we have, the closest unit that we have to her is Agrius. Uh, both these units are able to you know, handle a lot of damage. Uh, I think Agrius is better at it because she has Saintly Wall, she has Sentinel. But I think Elsa is a, you know, a comparison, like th they're similar in, in the role. 
And uh, so I personally don't have Agrius, and I could see myself using her in a very similar manner to Agrius. She has, you know, she has the stun debuff. Uh, she doesn't have like you know three different debuffs to use one when uh, your opponent has like resist to one of them or something. But she has a stun debuff. She has pretty good defenses. I think against other Bruiser teams, she has an edge because she has both poison and uh, heal down. So it'll be easier to battle away their hit, uh, hit points if they have a healer on board. So she has that going for her. But uh, And it's possible that you can use both Agrius and Elsa. But if you're going for like a melee unit, which is a bruiser and then a healer and a DPS, uh, you would probably pick just one of either her or Agrius. So that's what I feel. That's what, uh, Those are my thoughts around her. I'm going to get into Garval now. So Garvel is also another fantastic unit. He has so many pros. Um, he has a hundred percent, you know, guaranteed hit skill. He has an insane passive, which gives him a lot of, uh, you know, magic. It gives him high agility and it gives him high dexterity. But it only lasts five turns. Uh, he has a physical or magic reflex as a counter ability. Uh, you can only have one. You can't choose both. Um, he has a physical barrier. He has a teleport skill, which is especially useful for um, uh, running him in like a double quicken team because it can teleport around to get enemies that are far away. Um, he has charm resist. He has both magic and missile type attacks on his main job. So regardless of his sub job, you, can, you will still have access to both magic and missile type. On a sub job though, he has access to jamming thirst, Asuna and Cura. And he has a very powerful TMR. I could see people building him just for that TMR because I think it's fantastic. Now, getting into the con side, um, he has a 10% weakness to both light and to to magic. So usually that comes, uh, those two come together in like in a lot of units. Like for example, uh, Kilfe has Holy. Although she's an Earth unit, she ha she does light damage, uh, light magic damage. So, you know, there's a lot of units that have uh, light magic attacks. So he has a lot of units that will have a significant chance of doing extra damage to him. Um, on top of that, he only has 20 spirit penetration skill. Um, he has, uh, you know, 30 spirit down on his limit break if you max it up. But... Um, I think, like, although his TMR can give him a huge uh, magic penetration, like it goes up to 50, 50 magic penetration, if somebody has 100 spirit built up, he needs to have that particular sub job, and he will still only be able to negate 20 of it, regardless of what the magic penetration is. Now, I don't think he needs to have both of them, but I'm just saying it as a con, because, uh, like, like don't build him to say oh you know what he's going to be doing high damage regardless that's not true because if you have a unit that builds uh specifically uh, to um have high spirit he will be doing little damage to that unit uh so that's one way to like if you're ex if you're expecting um to face him uh that's one way to negate his damage um, other than that, he also has pretty high AP cost on his skills, especially his main job skills. Um, like uh, uh, one of his skills costs 44 AP, the other one costs I think 34 AP, uh, and his main bread and butter skill, uh, which is the 100% hit skill, costs 34 AP. Um, he starts off with 50% of his AP, and that can drain fast. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. You have to be careful how you use your AP. Now, some PvP considerations. Um, I think he is fantastic, especially on live PvP match. Uh, to start off, he has the combination of an instant cast 100% hit skill with charm resist. I think that's that's great because those are two things that I always look for in my team. I'm like, how do I deal with charm? Okay, how do I deal with uh, you know evade? So having one unit that can cover both of those things at once is is really good. Um, he also has an interesting passive, which I mentioned before, that really high agility, really high uh, magic for the first five turns. Uh, and on top of that, he has a very high percent chance to cast sleep skill if you use it within the first few turns of the game. 
I think th uh, that that would make for an interesting combination. Um, and I can see a lot of like interesting plays being done with him. Uh, but again, like, you know, this, like, he will probably not be casting that sleep skill in, uh, you know, in like an auto battle. He'll probably use another skill. But I think in, you know, in live battle, I think that, like, just having him around uh, is, is going to be very interesting. Um, like, I think, uh, like, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, I hate people at con corner camp. This is not a unit to be doing that with. This is a unit to be going all out and attacking because that's what he's built for. And uh, he also has the barrier, which will help him survive, uh, especially against, you know, like physical teams. But like all around, I th like, you know, when Kilfi came out and she had the huge combination of like, you know, guaranteed hit, uh, barrier, uh, everyone was like, wow, she's such a powerful unit. I think he is like an upgraded version of Kilfe. Like when, if, if he was to be released right now is I think the similar way to Kilfe being released back then. It's like, wow, this unit came out and has all these combination of things that make it really powerful. Uh, that's how I see him. Now, um, on, on terms of like the auto battle PVP, like Arena Guild Wars, I think that uh, like he has a few buffs, especially on his sub jobs. But I think the barrier skill is really the main buff that he needs. Uh, the other skills are like, you know, they're nice, but they're not, they wouldn't typically be needed unless like a map had very huge heights or something. Uh, and you needed like an extra move, plus one move, plus one jump. But I think for most of the time that uh, his barrier is all you need. Uh, and depending on who you're fighting, you might also want him to be using his TMR. So if he's be going to be doing a lot of damage and he's not going to really be around to be taking a lot of damage, you don't even need the barrier. You can just go for the TMR, make sure that he always uses the TMR, turn off everything, and he would be good to go. His 100% his hit skill has a huge, uh, well, one of the higher multipliers of his skill set. Uh, and it has a huge range and it is AOE. So what that means is most of the time, he, that's the skill he'll be using. So, uh, for example, if I'm looking at uh, Federica with Sharpshoot, sometimes she might have like a 30% chance to hit somebody with Barrage and do more damage, so she will use that, even though it, it'll miss and she ends up doing no damage. Um, I don't think you will be having that problem with him too much. Uh, besides, it is his bread and butter skill, so I could also see you just turning off all the other skills and just using that skill if you're having a huge problem with it. But I think that makes it easier for you to use him even in auto battle content. So, um, you know, I think he's good in both uh, auto battle and in live PvP matches. And I'm sure I'll be seeing a, a lot of him, if not right now, uh, because of anniversary coming up, I think I'll definitely be seeing him like over the next few months. Now, uh, back to the other considerations part where I'm telling you what other things that you should think of if you want to buy him or not. Again, the anniversary is just coming. I mentioned that before with Elsa, so, uh, you know, Decide how you want to spend your Vizior. Um, now, this is a very interesting point, and it's only applicable like right right now. So, uh, the upcoming CM is already providing 50% charm resist. So, I picked him up right away because I wanted units that have charm resist. But for the upcoming CM, that value of having 50% charm resist is diminished because everyone will have that. So, I don't need to use him specifically to fight charm teams. Uh, everyone will be able to fight charm teams. I don't think there will be any uh, Steelheart teams because it will not have any effect. So uh, <clears throat> the other thing is that, so for example, when I look at the last CM, everyone was uh, anticipating a lot of dodge teams to come about. So if you know we're fighting dodge teams, everyone is going to find a way to be able to fight them. Otherwise, you know you're going to lose. So likewise, I think a lot of people are anticipating that um, you know he makes a, a huge appearance in the next CM, especially within like the top ranks. So because of that, people are looking at ways on how to counter him. Now I've done some practice matches, and my Agarval is only 89, but I fought a guy who built up his defenses so well that Garval did only um, uh, only 1,000 damage with with any of his skills. Now I only have him at 89, so I didn't have his TMR to, you know, to do the 50% magic resist. Uh, so you know, maybe with that I might be able to do like say 2k or something. But if the unit has 3 to 4k HP, I will not be one shotting anyone. I will at most be two shotting.
right? So um, if you have somebody with a full life on the team uh, and that also has Ryu's uh, TMR, that's going to make a hard fight for me to uh, to use him on if I'm using a double quick and comp with him. He is a double, he is a great, you know, a double quick and unit, especially with his teleport ability, able to reach far places. But in the next CM, I just, I think that a lot of people are just expecting people to use him. So because of that, you might have a hard time, you know, just using him because of that. But regardless, if if um, if so many people build against him and nobody's using him, then everyone is going to go away from that build and and using him ex becomes viable again. So it's a cycle, and I think that's a good cycle and problem to have. Uh, you know, like it's a good it's a good design of the game um, that you know you can choose what to be good against. But if you're good against that, then you know you're lacking somewhere else. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, that was my review. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts. Um, you know, leave leave your comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye.